Good morning, everybody. It is December 14th, 2022. It's 4.27 in the morning. Right there. Okay. This is part two of chapter one of Dean Koon's Frankenstein, book two, City of Night. This tattoo was, in effect, a mask meant to distract the eye from consideration of the broken structures under it. Damage done by his creator in the distant past. Caught in the crosslight, Dushulan was sufficiently revealed for the two men to detect, if not understand, the radical Gematria, 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 okay, under the tattoo. They regarded him less with fear than with a solemn respect, as they might stand witness to a spiritual visitation. He traded light for shadow, that alley for another, his rage escalated to fury. His huge hands shook, spasmed as if with the need to throttle. He fisted them, jammed them into his coat pockets. Even on this summer night in the cooling bayou air, he wore a long black coat. Neither heat nor bitter cold affected him, nor pain nor fear. When he quickened his pace, the... Commodious coat billowed as if it were a cloak. With a hood, he might have passed for death himself. Perhaps murderous compulsion was woven through his very fiber. His flesh was the flesh of numerous criminals. Their bodies... Their bodies having been stolen from a prison graveyard immediately following interment. Of his two hearts, one came from a mad arsonist who burned churches. The other had belonged to a child molester. Even in a God-made man, the heart can be deceitful and wicked. The heart sometimes rebels against everything that the mind knows and believes. If the hands of a priest can do sinful work, then what can be expected of the hands of a convicted strangler? Dushulan's hands had come from just such a criminal. His gray eyes had been plucked from the body of an executed axe murderer. Occasionally, a soft, luminous pulse passed through them, as though the unprecedented storm that burst him had left behind its lightning. His brain had once filled the skull of an unknown miscreant. Death had erased all memory of that former life, but perhaps the cerebral circuits remained miswired. Now his growing fury took him to seedier streets across the rivers in Algiers. These darker byways were rank and busy with illegal enterprise. One shabby block accommodated a whorehouse thinly disguised as a massage and acupuncture, acupuncture clinic, a tattoo parlor, a pornographic video shop, and a raucous, or raucous Cajun bar. Zydeco music boomed. In cars parked along the alleyway behind these businesses, pimps socialized while they waited to collect from the girls whom they supplied to the brothel. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. <laughs>